Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Legal and Finance Committee meeting for October 1st, 2014. First item on the agenda is a uh, roll call and determination of quorum. Maggie? Here. Just barely, thank you. Um, the next item I have here is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, is there anyone wishing to add or remove an item from the agenda first before we adopt it? I'm not seeing any lights. I enter chair will entertain a motion to adopt agenda. So moved. Motion is made by uh, Alderwoman Drew and seconded by Laurenti to adopt the agenda. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, thank you. Now it's time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at this meeting on any issue not on the agenda, except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the council members present. I do not have any speaker request forms for general public comment. We will now go into non or excuse me, consent items, items one through 21, and I do have item number 10 as a comment from Mr. Tim Rogers. Would you care to speak it to us at that, on this item at this time? Yes. And if you'll identify yourself for the record and your affiliation. Okay. Is, this a, is your overhead working? Oh, there we yes. Go. Uh, my name is Tim Rogers. I'm chairman of the West Dakota Water Development District. Uh, I'm in here in favor of the uh, $60,000 match that's being proposed. I just wanted to give a quick overview. I think you guys have seen probably this a couple times, but uh, the cost of the Canyon Lake project to remove the sediment, to remove all the sediment is going to be $415,000. Uh, where we're at right now is West Dakota has set aside $100,000, uh, and that's for the project, and we set aside another $50,000 along with Black Hills Fly Fishermen uh, to get it uh, for a 60,000 match with the city hoping they would match and you guys came up with 60,000. So we're gonna be at 220,000. Uh, we're also working with the city with, uh, to secure a state grant to help get up close to the 415,000 with $155,000 grant that uh, we'll find out about that in January. But uh, uh, if, we, if we can get your concurrence on the $60,000 match, that'll take us a long ways to cleaning out uh, the sediment in the lake. Just to give you an idea of what the 220,000 will do, this is Canyon Lake and the red and the blue areas are kind of the two vital areas, or red and, no, I'm sorry, the blue and the yellow areas are the vital areas that the public uses that we plan to remove sediment. And, uh, uh, and that's around $220,000. So if we get that match, we'll be able to get those critical areas. And if we get the state match, we'll be able to maybe knock off this other area of 155,000. So uh, we just, we, we get a chance to do this every 15, 20, 25 years to clean the lake out. And the times now with the Canyon Lake uh, dam replacement and, and uh, we hope that you pass the, the measure. Thank you. If you have any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rogers. We will uh, stand by for questions if this item is pulled from the agenda, otherwise, it will automatically go through, so please stand by. I do not have any other speaker request forms on items one through 21. I just wanna look at the audience and see if there's anybody else who wants to speak on any other issue. Not seeing any. The uh, co public comment is now closed and I will go to the uh, committee members to see if there's any items that we wish to remove from the uh, consent calendar at this point. And I have the city attorney's office. Ah, Carla, good day. Sorry, I'd like to remove number 12, item number 12. Number 12 is pulled. Any other items? Not seeing any other items uh, to be questioned. We will, uh, the chair will enter, now entertain a motion to adopt the remainder of the items one through 21 with the exception of item number 12. Motion made by, by Alderman Laurenti, seconded by Alderman Weifenbach to approve the agenda they, with the exception of number 12. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, 
is that we will authorize the mayor and finance officer to sign a memorandum of understanding between the city of Rapid City and the Pennington County Sheriff's Office regarding detoxification services. And I will go to the city attorney's office. Carla Cushman, if you please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think this item needs to be continued for two weeks. There's a few tweaks to the MOU that need to occur um, and haven't occurred because our office is short staffed and because the sheriff is out of town. So I think it should be ready in two weeks. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to uh, continue this item for two weeks. Motion and second, second by Alderman Weifenbach to continue to the next legal and finance. Any other questions, comments? Chair not seeing or recognizing any. The motion is to continue. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Now we will go on to items 22 uh, through 24. And now is the time for public comments um, on those items. And I have a speaker request form here from Help me out here, Constance. Yes, you'll have to help me with the last name. Very good, thank you. If you will go over to the microphone. Yeah. Let me practice it one more time and then I will go public with that. <laughs> thank you for your patience and we will give you three minutes to make your comments and um, if you identify yourself for the committee. Yes, uh, my name is Constance Iskratescu, and I am the property owner at 821 St. James. Um, I am here appealing a adverse effect decision uh, that was made by the Historical Preservation Commission. Uh, Bill Freitag, who was on the Historical Preservation Commi Commission, urged me to continue and appeal to legal and finance because apparently even though the commission may make a recommendation, you still have the power to recommend to the city uh, council that the project move forward. Uh, Ms. Hansel is present and she had given me uh, the materials that were submitted in this process and that included a letter by me that sets forth um, essentially the history of the house, the, uh, my position that the clapboard siding, which is a wood composite siding. Um, in fact, uh, I, I know John Herning. I went to uh, Black Hill State with him. I'm local in the area, even though I have been living in California for a period of time. And, uh, you know, he had a chance to uh, look at the house and he had recommended steel siding, but because I wanted the house to look as original as possible, I went with wood siding. So even from the beginning, I considered alternatives to make the house look more uh, as an old house. Um, you know, I, I've been here almost two months. I've got water in my basement because the gutters are off the house. Um, I have heard um, I had another cider come to my house, and this is not in the letter, and I have heard kind of through the grapevine that the cider may have said something about a four-inch siding being made by LP Smart Side, and I asked my contractor, Mr. Eichsenberger, if that was in fact true. He said it was not true. I myself called the company. Uh, uh, Wausau Building Supply um, and also spoke to the brand manager of Diamond Coat who is the pre-finisher for this particular siding and they have assured me that this siding does not come in four inch. The siding dimensions of this particular siding, six inch is the smallest, eight inch and twelve inch. And uh, Mr. Hiska, uh, yes, sir. 
I apologize for uh, mispronouncing your last name. Uh, if, I'll give you one more minute, and if you can wrap up your comments. Um, are there, well, for those of you who have read the materials, is there any questions that you have based on the letter that I submitted? We'll, we'll stand by for that question here from the committee members. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I have a photograph of the house um, in the materials before and after. The Historic Preservation Committee has approved the encapsulation of the windows, the eaves, and the soffits in, in, in aluminum cladding. They've already approved that. So the only issue is whether the siding should be a four inch reveal as opposed to a six inch reveal. And if you look at the before and after picture um, of the house, because some work had been completed on the front porch before the stop work order uh, was initiated. This is before, and this is the house as it will We've since trimmed in the windows with a different color, but this is the house, the way it's going to look. I'm not going to have the red corners. The corners are going to be done in a muted color. Only the windows and soffits are going to be in the autumn red. The house looks beautiful uh, in, uh, with the surrounding red maples. Uh, it's amazing, even though you kind of look at the colors and think that red, but how this house blends in and how perfectly it looks in its surroundings. And I submit, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Legal and Finance Committee, that th the house is going to be beautiful. And as Mr. Freitag mentioned, it is... If I can interrupt again, I'm sorry. It, yes. Uh, stand by for questions from the uh, committee members. We will come to this item here in a moment, so please stand by, and we appreciate your public comments at Thank this time. Thank you. Thank you. And I promise I will be brave enough to pronounce your last name the next time you come up. <laughs> yes. I'm practicing. <laughs> item 22 is, I do not have any other public comments on any of the uh, following items, 22 to 24 um, at this time. So I um, just wanted to check and make sure I'm not missing anyone. Not seeing any, we will go on to item 22, which is um, uh, from Alderman Laurenti, requests staff to obtain financials from developer regarding possible TIF for apartments on St. Joseph Street. Uh, Chair, will, uh, I'll recognize Alderman Laurenti. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to make a motion to continue the item for two weeks to the next legal and finance meeting, if I could maintain the floor. Certainly. Second motion. Seconded by uh, Alderman Weifenbach and Alderman Laurenti, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to continue this for two weeks, uh, one, to give the uh, developer an opportunity to bring uh, forth the information that we had requested and was offered at the uh, TIF committee level meeting. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, give an opportunity before we you know, go down this road and just completely uh, discuss the item. Um, maybe some of my colleagues may have a comment on this one as well. but. Um, I wanted to, again, continue it for two weeks pending some information that we uh, may be getting from the developer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Darla Drew. Well, it seems to me that um, these TIF issues come down to a matter of trust. You either trust them or you don't. And you can find whatever you're looking for in those records. So um, I don't feel any need personally to look at their financial statements. I know what they do in town and I think it's good work and I know what needs to be done for the um, School <coughs> of Mines is imperative. They need that, that housing. Um, so I'd like to see it be done as quickly as possible. And I trust these gentlemen, so I yield the floor. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, to me, I understand the spirit of of the request here, and, and I'll, I'll grant my colleague the opportunity to, to, to uh, uh, continue the item. And 
Just to understand, though, that this, this was not generated from us. There was an invitation made to two of us on the TIF committee that are also council people to actually view these and enhance um, that didn't quite transpire, which is neither here nor there. And I also understand the fact that in the process it's not required. Uh, but part of the process that is required is financials for a company to be shown for the, the, the TIF to be created. Part of the process also requires that the TIF meet certain specific levels, and one of those levels is but four. It's, it's, a, it's one of the biggest hurdles for a TIF to be approved is, but for the TIF, would this happen? I mean, could this be done without this TIF? And that's one of the items that has not been vetted in the past vigorously like it should have been vetted. Uh, the conversation come up at, at the TIF committee, like I said earlier, it, it wasn't, there was questions asked on the dais. I don't know that we got quite those answers and it was offered up that we would see the financials from a project that is very similar in nature. And that, that, that true is how the spirit of this, this request became available. And I understand it's not a requirement, so whatever happens, happens. And I understand there's a level of trust that must take place. But there's also a level of verification for me as a council person who represents citizens in my city that says, Ron, you trust people, but you also verify information. I think that's a prudent business thing or a prudent position as a council person is to verify when I have uh, questions that linger in my mind. When my constituents ask me, why did you approve this? I can thoroughly explain to them, here's why. And some of the questions I have obviously are, does the project cash flow without the TIF? I look at the performer that was provided to me. Okay, and, and you know, obviously this, this, there's a, you know, just, just caveating the, you know, of why I would be interested in seeing this information, whether I get it or not is, is beside the point. But the fact of the matter is the, the information was offered up to us. It didn't transpire out that way and for whatever reason. Uh, but there's also the vetting of this TIF. There's a responsibility by the council when they make these decisions that it's vetted. Because if, if taxes weren't required for people in the city then nobody would have to pay taxes on anything they built. And there would be no influx of taxes into the city coffers. So we just have to be careful on how we vet these and make sure that we're doing our due diligence and our prudence and still understanding all the, you know, everything that's involved in the TIF. So with that, with that being said, I mean, I, I can definitely look at continuing, continuing the item and understanding that really there, there may, it may be just a moot point in the fact that it's pr probably not required, but it would be good information to be able to make a very prudent and good decision. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman uh, Weifenbach. And again, just to remind the committee that this is just, motion is just to postpone. We're not debating the merits of the, the TIF itself. And so, just want to remind the committee members that it is just on the postponement. Thank you. Alderman Laurenti, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair for the opportunity to speak again. And I just wanted to dovetail off of some of the comments that were made on this motion. Again, the reason I'm continuing it is so that we can get the transparency that we need for this project. This is not, this is not a project for the School of Mines. This is a private developer project. If we were talking about property that the School of Mines owned, we would not even be speaking because it's a non-taxing entity and we wouldn't be doing a TIF for the School of Mines. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Um, and um, we'll go to the vote. Thank you. Thank you. The chair has not seen any other lights from the committee members. Uh, we'll, we'll proceed to the vote. Again, just a reminder that the, to the committee that we are postponing. The motion that is for in front of us is to postpone for uh, two weeks approximately to the next two, uh, legal and finance committee meeting. And I apologize, I don't have the date in front of me, but um, that is the essence of the motion. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 23 is the appeal by Constant Istra Tescu. Hopefully I was very close. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, of the Historic Preservation Commission uh, recommended denial of siting permit at 821 St. James. And if I, I the chair will look for uh, entertainment for a motion or comments from the committee members first. Not seeing any. If I may go to uh, 
let me start with Brad, uh, Brett Limbaugh, to, if I may, and we'll probably eventually going over to Sarah Hensel, if I may. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, Sarah Hensel is prepared to uh, give you any uh, testimony for staff on this issue. Thank you. Sarah, if you'll identify yourself for the committee. My name is Sarah Hansel. I'm a planner with the Long Range Planning Division. Thank you. You may proceed with whatever you feel that you have uh, as far as uh, the uh, information in front of us is to uh, not allowing the uh, siting permit for 821 St. James. Um, the recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission was to not issue um, issue the building permit to complete the work that's been done on the siding. Do we have a stop order on it currently? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the chair will now recognize uh, Alderwoman Darla Drew. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the appeal by, by Ms. Istratescu. <laughs> <laughs> motion is to approve the denial and seconded by Alderman um, Renty? Approve the appeal. Th approve the appeal. Did I misstate? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry. So that it approve the appeal of the denial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Just want to make sure. To okay. to direct staff to issue the permit. I issue then. the permit. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. And I will allow that be part of the motion. Okay. Now, uh, Alderman Weifenbach. Thank you. Part of my question got answered. I thought that's what we were looking to do and uh, the staff had an opportunity to review this is our position that they have on this understanding that some of these these things are going to be addressed in the future but uh, four inch versus six inches the I mean is it um, what, is you, what is your what is the staff's recommendation at this time um, staff doesn't make recommendations on the the scope of the project we take the input from the Historic Preservation Commission and the comments from SHPO um, their findings were based on the Department of Interior standards for rehabilitation, which is um, a set of criteria that's used to evaluate projects that are qualifying for tax um, um, tax credit purposes. Um, and so their, their finding of adverse effect was based on that criteria. And so, yeah, at this time, the, the staff doesn't eva evaluate those or provide opinion, but... So, Mr. Chair, I have another question. Alderman Weifenbach. So I know that I've been through this down this road before, and one of the questions that always comes up is: Has there been the due diligence done to look at alternatives, or um, and is there alternatives for? I mean, is there a four-inch siding? Um, there is a four-inch siding. Um, she actually investigated that as an option. Um, I I don't recall the spe specific amounts, but for the cedar siding, the four cedar siding, which would. Um, as, as she mentioned, the product she's proposing to use does not come in four inches that we've been able to find so the, in that specific product. But the cost would be four inches. So, sorry, we, we can't hear you. So if you'll go up to the microphone, you certainly may. Uh, choosing not to? Mr. Okay. Chair, I have Mr. Walkenbach, okay. you have the floor. Um, so the state ruled that this is an adverse effect on the historic preservation? Um, the state uses that same uh, Department of Interior standards okay. to make their calls on whether or not the proposed project is an adverse effect. And, and then so our, they did. our historic society also felt the same. They did. Okay. I, I'm not real familiar because there wasn't a lot of information on the link, so I'm trying to draw from that. So thank you. Um, Ms. Hensel, if, if I understand it correctly, this will allow this home to be a non-contributing home to uh, the preservation uh, commission, preservation um, status. Um, I can say that the um, the existing profile or the the profile and the the stylistic effect of the existing siding is part of what makes that structure what it is. It gives it its character. Um, it's, it's not the only element, and, um, and when we talk about having a building lose its contributing status, it's about accumulation 
of change over time. So it's difficult to say whether that one change would result in it ultimately becoming non-contributing. That's something that the um, National Park Service and the Department of Interior would evaluate as part of a resurvey, as part of a survey. So it's, it's about accumulation of changes over time. And this particular episode will not create that that factor is that am I hearing that correctly um, I, from, from what I know it may or it may not it's it, it's not a yes or no okay in every instance appreciate your comments uh, thank you uh, not seeing any other lights Qu the uh, motion is to uh, grant the appeal for the denial uh, to, uh, in, in other words overturning the Commission's decision yes okay all right those in favor of the motion say aye those opposed? No. Motion carries two to one, and we will send that to the council for more consideration. I, I certainly can, yeah. Oh, okay. yep. And that's the prerogative of the chair. Okay, they can just when they want. <laughs> when they want, yep. Yep, uh, so the next item here is the from the city's attorney's office, item number 24, introduction and first reading of ordinance number 6015 to consolidate provisions relating to the municipal gross tax excuse me receipts tax uh, codify the use of the revenue and appoint a promotion agency by repealing sections of the city ordinance and adding a chapter 318 to the municipal code and the chair will look to uh, city attorney's office uh, carla cushman any additional comments? No, I believe this ordinance is based on an agreement that's been in place for some time that is renewed every year. Uh, it was decided to put the terms of the agreement into an ordinance into an ordinance form, and that's what you have before you. Motion made by Alderman Laurenti, seconded by Alderman Weifenbach to approve the introduction of first reading. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Adjourn. Motion by Alderman Weifenbach, second by Laurenti to adjourn. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.